are a faithful bunch and I appreciate it and I know the Lord thinks much of faithfulness praise God I'll never forget I mentioned it last night there was a pastor down in Houston that I in the process of getting this, a meeting scheduled with him and he said brother Mayo he said the days of the long revivals are over I'm going to tell you something. The reason those doors are open are not only for us, but it's for the world. If the salt loses its savor, what will it be salted with? We're the salt of the earth. The rest of this revival, going into next week, I don't know if the flyers have, they don't have next week printed on there, do they? It's going to be a revival of motivation among the people of God. I know this church has got what it takes. I've seen you guys run on eight cylinders, man. And I'm telling you what, old Slewfoot, man, he don't even, he don't even dare set foot on this block. That's right. God loves you. Man, I feel, I feel so much love for some of you people here tonight. I feel such a peace about you people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9, begin reading in verse 14. Hallelujah. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. Wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Jesus answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And Jesus asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. And the father in his desperation said this, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Is it possible to be a believer and an unbeliever? You know, there's a lot of people that believe in the Godhead and speaking in tongues and at where Acts 2.38 is, but they can't show you where it says that God loves them. There's a lot of people that can quote you a lot of one God scriptures, and man, we need them. That's one side of the sword. But they couldn't point to one scripture that shows that God forgives sins. That's what he came to do. Hallelujah. 
You say, well, you must be one of these preachers that thinks it's okay for people to sin. That's a bunch of puke. The greatest thing that you'll ever do is have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The ugliness of sin cancels that. It's puke. But grace will lift you up and dust you off and say, get going. We're going on. Truth gives direction. Truth says go. Truth says neither do I condemn thee. Grace says go and sin no more. That's another message. I want to preach to you to a few minutes tonight. And I'm praying right now in the name of the Lord Jesus to reach the discouraged, to reach the hopeless, to reach the fearful, to reach the unbelieving in our midst tonight. Yes, you're a part of the church. Yes, you're faithful to this church. But deep within your bosom and deep within your mind, you don't believe God's going to do anything in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind every impediment that would bind your spirit and your heart and your mind from receiving from the Lord Jesus Christ in this service tonight. And I bind it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let the gift of faith, my God, operate in this building tonight we ask it in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah you may be seated amen 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 amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah did you put lysol on this did you sure you sprayed this with lysol okay <laughs> you spray less all on me, man. I'm liable to shrivel up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to speak to you for a few moments tonight on the two sides of if. The two sides of if. This is an important portion of Scripture. Because in it we see the total kaleidoscope of human emotion. We see the utter frustration and calamity that can come to the human experience. But we can also find healing and power when brought to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see the total dynamics of humanity and in all its frailty and desperation. And we see the magnitude of truth and grace exemplified through the lips and the power of the master of masters. Hallelujah. Jesus came unto his own in the midst and in the very first portion of the scripture I read in your hearing. And when he came unto his disciples that had dwelt with him and walked with him, we find the scribes encircling them. And there's a man in the midst that has a problem. You know, many of our people in our world today are looking to the apostolics. But until we have Jesus Christ in the midst, nothing's going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. We can have debates and we can have arguments and we can beat people over the head with doctrine and my, my, my. There's no defense for the apostolic message. How I love the word of God. But until you got the power of the living Jesus Christ in your midst, nothing's going to happen. Hallelujah. You better spray that. I've been slobbering all over that. We know it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the Lord turns on they that accuse his disciples and say, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. Hallelujah. Evidently, the spirit that had a hold of this young man was a spirit that tossed and turned him into a world of opposites. 
There are people sitting in this congregation tonight that you may be sitting on the top of the mountain when you leave here tonight, but tomorrow morning you'll be sitting on the bottom. Here's a young man that was cast into the fire and into the water at the whim of another spirit. And you may be tossed and turned with such a situation in your life. You just hang on tonight. And the man goes on to describe the situation that his son is in. And it says, And wheresoever he taketh him, he tears him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Hallelujah. The disciples could not do it without the presence of the Lord. And Jesus said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. But when the Spirit saw him, hallelujah, straight away it tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. If you want help for your family, you want help for your situation, get him to the feet of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you can't get him there, you fall at the feet in prayer and stand in their steed. Hallelujah. And Jesus asked the Father and said, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. This man with bitter tears had watched his son grow in this condition all of his life. This man had lived with this particular uh, impediment in this boy's life since from the days of the swaddling babe until now he was probably drenched in a garment that was stained with his own bodily uh, functions. Hallelujah. But this man, loving and caring of his son, had sought out relief from the master. Hallelujah. And the man said, and oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That prayer has never been answered by the Lord. And it's never going to be answered. The prayer, have compassion on us and help us, will never be answered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Because you see, if God answered the prayer, help us, there'd be no people dying of AIDS tonight. If God answered the prayer, help us, there'd be no starving children in Africa. If God answered the prayer, help us, there'd be no saints that are having their cars repossessed and are facing financial struggle. But there's many upon many that are facing these situations. Hallelujah. If God answered the prayer, help us, then why would any of us have any problems or situations that would cause us to be ill at ease with ourselves and our walk with God. Hallelujah. If the prayer works that said, help us, why would we have so many loved ones that are lost tonight? Hallelujah. But you see, it's not conditioned upon God help us. It's conditioned upon if you can believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man said, if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. I'm just guaranteeing you, friend of mine, that there are people on a bar stool in this city tonight that'll take their last drink. There's people caught in the act of adultery or fornication that their soul has burdened them with guilt for so long. They're going, to, they're going to either find relief in the altar of an apostolic church or by the end of a long, cold steel barrel. There are people in this city tonight, maybe a young girl that's seeking an abortion, maybe a young boy that's his first homosexual date, that will lead them down the path of sin. And all in all, it will end up in a place where they will no doubt cry out to a God that does not respond to the prayer of help us. 
But God does respond to a people that believe him to move. And a people that believe in the power and unction of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Part of the problem that we have is that many of us have a false concept of God. Hallelujah. I don't expect you guys to get quiet on me. I figure I'll preach in a couple libraries before my career's up. But you need to get with this preacher because I'm bowling right down some of your alleys. I don't believe in bowling either. Hallelujah. But I'm going to get a strike if you'll just let God touch you and receive His Word with meekness. Hallelujah. Some of the problem that we have in this room tonight is we do not have a correct biblical perspective of the concept of our great God. What are you saying, Brother Mayo? I'm saying that the concept that is in your mind and in your heart comes from various influences in your life. I would like to discuss a few of these so that you can identify them in your own situation. The very first concept of God that anybody in this room will have in their life comes from their parents. This is when authority figures and the do's and the don'ts and the rights and the wrongs are first established in an individual's life. That's why it's so imperative that a man is a man and takes the helm of priesthood in his home. It's because you got little ones that are watching. you got little ones that are listening. If mama's playing dad and dad's playing mom, then you've already got problems. But it's God's plan to make the man the man and the man the priest and the woman to fall under and the children to be children. Hallelujah. Why? Because God wants to be represented as the Father. Hallelujah. It's in the parental relationship with children that self-control the first concepts of morality and ethics are integrated into that young, frail life. The very first concept they will have of do's and don'ts and any type of law or justice will come when you say no and when you say yes. Hallelujah. Friend of mine, if you let your house run wild and do whatever they want, it's no great mystery why they won't live for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the church has to go running after their very own children that should have been saved first time round, then you got some problems. Now I understand that people can get mixed up and messed up and you've done the best you could and all that stuff. But the very first concepts of God and holiness and righteousness will be integrated in the family relationship. The second place that the concept of God will be indoctrinated in a human life will come from society. But what is society but nothing more than a mass of individuals that have been turned out from the family structure? But can you believe that when society begins to influence the family, instead of the family influencing the society, then they get things backwards? And that's where America is today that the majority that's messed up can actually dictate to the few how it's going to be. Hallelujah. You're saying, preacher, this is more like a book report. You just hang on. Because I'm going to walk right down your road and tell you that your concept of God is incorrect and that's why you're in the mess you're in. Your first concept of God comes from your daddy. Your second concept of God comes from society and law. Societal culture, whether it be societal worship or culture affected by religiosity. And I talked about them several nights ago, about the Hindus and the American Indians. And you can see how all the primitive concepts of religiosity and civilization normally go hand in hand. And the morality that's enforced religiously will be enforced societally. Hallelujah. 
I went over to the Cosmosphere. Can I say that we went over there? We went and watched a movie. I got to confess. And my wife got up and left. She was the only holy one in the bunch. No, I'm only, I'm having fun now. I'm trying to get some of you to smile because this is not going to be so bad that it's ain't castor oil. This is meat. Hallelujah. But what I want you to understand tonight is this. Is that when the relationship that exists between society and the family becomes corrupt, then their concept of God becomes corrupt. Hallelujah. And the last and the final and the greatest revelation of God does not come from the family. And it does not come from society. But it comes from God's Word. And every child that's born of the water and of the Spirit better integrate this thing in his bosom if he's going to make it to the other side or else you're going to be lost in the wilderness. Hallelujah. You're saying, preacher, I don't know what you're trying to say. You just hang on. Hallelujah. 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 Speaking of the children of Israel that had received the word of God at Sinai and began their trek through the wilderness, God said this, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Some of you have hard hearts, and that's why you can't feel God. And that's why you can't get involved. And that's why you don't have a burden to show up on Saturday, or barely on Sunday. You've got a hard heart. The Bible says, God speaking, Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Hallelujah. Speaking again of them that were in the wilderness, the Bible says, While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. You can harden your heart in one day. You can harden your heart after one church service. Hallelujah. What is the provocation, preacher? The provocation was when God commissioned there to be spies sent into Canaan land. There were ten of them that complained and brought back an evil report. There was only two out of twelve that said, we can do it. They had a proper concept of God. But the other ten said, our concept is wrong. Matter of fact, they said there's giants in the land and we are as grasshoppers in their sight. Their concept of themselves was wrong. Their concept of their brother was wrong. Their concept of God was wrong. And that's why you're defeated. That's why you're in the wilderness. That's why you're going in circles because your heart is hard. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believe not, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Belief and unbelief cannot coexist. Either you're a believer tonight or you're, you're an unbeliever. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. You show up. You come to revival. You listen to the preaching. But the word is not mixed with faith. That's why you have no works. 
For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. If you believe, then you can enter in. If you don't believe, you're in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what. Not everybody that came out of Egypt went into Canaan land. There was only two of them. Matter of fact, God said everybody that's above the age of 20 is going back into the wilderness because they believed an evil report. Why, what did they base their evil report on? Their concept of the Word of God was not in here. Their concept of the enemy was bigger than their God. To them, their enemy was bigger than the promises of God and the promises that God had pulled them out with. But God said, you have tempted me these ten times and that's it. Some of us need to get a biblical concept of God because without it, you won't enter into rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are tired tonight. And I know what it's like to work a full-time job. I used to own my own business before I preach full-time. But I'm going to tell you something. We need to get on the edge of our seat and realize that God has called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is not a little pedal push through the tulips. You've been called by God for such a time as this. Let's get with it. Let's believe the promises of God, which are yea and amen, and get a biblical concept of our great God. The greatest probably... The best place to start for the biblical concept of God Himself is found in the book of Genesis where God's power is made manifest. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. You don't think God can solve your problem? You don't think God can remove that stone from your heart? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. If some of you would hearken unto the Holy Ghost, instead of hardening your heart, the light would be divided from dark. But your heart's hard. And you've tempted God in the day of provocation. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day. And darkness he called night. Hallelujah. That's the very first portion of our creative God. God's power in creation. Hallelujah. Is also found in Psalms 104. Hallelujah. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain who lays the beams of his chambers in the water who maketh the clouds as chariot who walketh upon the wings of the wind who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flaming fire who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever thou coveredest it with the deep as with a garment the waters stood above the mountains at thy rebuke they fled at the voice of thy thunder thou hasted away that's just one portion of our God that he speaks those things that are as though they are not and who are you to say no he can't hallelujah hallelujah are you supposed to read Psalms 147 Can you please read that pastor Oh, 
cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. Hallelujah. The power of God is able to turn your enemies away, friend. But your concept has got to be out of this book instead of out of your situation. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40 says this, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles of the very little thing all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity but you and I are the apple of his eye but your concept of God's not in the book to whom then will you liken me to whom then will you liken God or what likeness will you compare unto him Hallelujah. 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 Isaiah 42 and 5 says this, Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretcheth them out, He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the peoples, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Hallelujah! I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither to my praise to a graven image God called you out to be a light to the Gentiles but your concept got to be in this book Psalms 105 please this is God's power through his people we've talked about God's power in creation this is now God's power towards Hallelujah. And slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. Hold on one minute, please, Pastor. Ooh. You want to know what the problem with some of you is right this very second? You're so caught up in something else, you can't even get in tune with what God's trying to say to you. Because you're so used to tuning in and dropping out in the middle of a preaching service. May God shake you tonight to get a concept of what He wants for your life. Please read on. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines, also their fig trees, break the trees of their coast. He spake and the locusts came, the caterpillars, and that without number. He did eat all the herbs of their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also the firstborn in their land and the chief of their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribe. Egypt was glad when they departed for the fear of them that fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give them light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quail and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in dry places like a river. Woo! 
Hallelujah. That's fine, Pastor. Thank For you. For he remembered his holy promise. Hallelujah. And Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. Thank you, Pastor. What are you saying, preacher? That's God's power to his people to bring you out of darkness. We showed you God's power in creation. That's God's power for his people to bring you out. What hinders you is you are in the wilderness beyond because your heart is hard. <laughs> Psalms 107, please. Hallelujah. We've talked about God's power in creation. We've talked about God's power to His people. He sent. He turned. He spake. He gave. He smote. He spake again. He brought them forth. He spread a cloud for a covering. He brought quail from an eastern wind. He opened the rock and it gave water. He remembered and He gave. He did all that I understand. I am your God and these are my statutes. I, this is the concept he wants you to be known by. This is God's power in deliverance. Read on, preacher. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way, and they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord for His goodness and for His wondrous works unto the children of men. You want to know what that passage is Hallelujah. saying? People of God are parched and they're in a famine and it's been a while since you had a move of God. God will bring you to waters. God will bring you to the food. God will bring the power. You just believe that He's able. My God. Read on, preacher. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the word Hold of God. Hold on. Are you telling me that God will still help a rebel and a backslider and someone with a hard heart? Read on, preacher. And condemn the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord. Stop. You better get it in your mind that you better not sit in that situation. You better cry. Whoa, you better parch. Yes. You're brought down with labor. Yes. There's none to help. But if you'll cry, read on. To the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. He saved you out of your distresses. And he if you'll cry. You out of darkness and the shadow of death. Uh, and he broke their bands. Hallelujah. Woo. God not only will bring you out of darkness, he'll loose the bands. He'll break the iron. He'll deliver your soul if you'll cry unto your God. And he said that all that men would praise the Lord Woo. for the goodness and the wonderful works of What's your concept of your God? Why is your heart so hard? Why are you immoved in this revival? Why can't you break through? I'll tell you why. Your concept's not in that book. Your concept's from the world. Your concept's not of God. You've got your God in a little box. God's bigger than all of it. And he wants to deliver you tonight. Oh, yeah. Be seated. Woo. Read on, preacher. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools because their transgression. Transgressor. Because of their iniquities. You talking about backsliders? Mm -hmm. Yeah. God even loves the backslider. You're a transgressor. You're an iniquity, which means self-will. Read on. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. And you don't even God. love the word of God. And Read they fall on. near to the gates of death. You're in despair tonight. Read on. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. At least they cried. Hallelujah. And he saved them. He still saved them. To believe that he was able. Their distresses. Hallelujah. If you've got enough gumption to believe in a concept that God had of his own word, then you can be saved. Oh, my God. 
Read on. Yeah. He sent his word and healed them. Hold on. Hello? It said they abhorred all manner of meat. Some of you have not been able to come out of your dark spot through this revival. It's because the word of God bounces off your heart. Yeah. But if you'll cry unto your God and believe that this is the God that spoke the worlds into existence, God that brought me out and gave water out of a rock, and God that'll shine light in my prison house, He'll do it! What's your concept of our God? Read on. And they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distress. I love this. He sent His word. And healed them. And delivered them. That's what this preacher's doing tonight. God sent a word your way. And if you believe it, receive it and go on. Read on. But you've got to do this. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works among the children of men. Hey, hey. Woo. You want to know what your problem is? You're not grateful. You don't believe God's good. The devil's told you God's your enemy. Your concept's out of the book. Your concept is a lie. You're in darkness. You're in a prison house. You're covered with rocks. But God is able tonight to make it new. But some of you, your heart is hard and you don't want it. God, in the name of Jesus, send your word into the dark places. Send your word into the backslider's heart. Hallelujah. You say, I'm not backslid. Friend of mine, you're, you're a performer. You wear a mask here tonight. But God's able to see behind that and says, I want to heal you. If you'll get a concept of my deliverance, my power, my creative powers in the heavens. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. He taught of a Give the Lord a hand praise. That's the concept God wants you to have. He's able. He's a creator. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's got all power on heaven and earth. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, preacher. You see, if your concept of God is not according to his revelation of himself, then your concept is warped. And that's why you don't have your needs met because your concept of God is not according to this book. Mark chapter 11 says this, Jesus Christ said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall I believe those things which he says shall come to pass and he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If. There's two sides to if, friend. It ain't if God can. It's if you can. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses.
You know what the problem is? Unbelief and unforgiveness. Mountains will not be moved unless these two elements are gone from our lives. You that are praying over there, that's just fine. You keep on praying. I like that. That helps me preach. That don't bug me one bit. God's in that. The Lord said in Luke 17, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, if... Two sides to if, friend. It ain't if God's able. It's if you're able. If had... If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. In the book of Mark, it talked about a mountain, stones, rocks. In the book of Luke, the Lord used the example of roots and a tree. Why did the Lord use those two examples using if as the only condition to receive what you need? Because you see, in the Word of God, the Lord talks about a sower and the seed. There's four soil conditions. The fowls of the air eat that that fell by the wayside. The second one fell on stony soil. Could some of us have stones in our hearts tonight? And the Word of God can ha cannot have any root in your life. And as soon as affliction and offenses arise, you are offended for the Word's sake. The third category were the Word of God was sown among weeds. <clears throat> and the root systems actually choked out the seeds through the cares of this life. There's only one way I know to remove the stones and the weeds. And I talked about it last week and I'm going to say it again. This man right here, according to the Word of God in the Old Testament, is considered to be an ox. He's not a thoroughbred. He's not... May not be the Kentucky Derby's champion, but he's God's champion. But the reason that God chose an ox is because they're extremely stable. Their lines are always straight. And they always keep the same pace. Consistent. Jesus said one place in the New Testament, He says, any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. The plow is that double-edged sword that I've been breaking over that pulpit. And as long as you'll get behind the ox, the man of God, and follow Him, and let Him use the Word to plow up your soil, then the rocks will come up, they'll get turned, and be brought to the service where you can remove them, and the roots will be torn up. Get behind the man of God, and reaffirm the authority structure of God's plan. Some of you only behind the man of God by Word only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Belief is a prerequisite to receiving from God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. They that walk in the flesh cannot please God. To walk without faith is to walk in sin because what's not a faith is sin. Mark 16, 15 says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Okay. 
John 8 and 24 says, If you believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. Mark 4, 24 says, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. It's not if God will, it's if you will. It's not when God's going to, it's when you're going to. It's not how God's going to do it, it's how you're going to do it. Even Satan used the word if in his temptations of the Lord. If thou be the Son of God. If thou be the Son of God. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross and I will believe in you. What side of the word if are you on tonight? What side of the word if are you on tonight? You know, there's a lot of people that don't believe that God can change their situation by the very situation they're in. But the Bible says that every good thing cometh from the Father of lights. There is nothing that will befall any of us that isn't filtered through the hands of a loving God. The problem that we have is we misunderstand God's dealing with us and it causes us to get hard. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 12 after talking about chastisement, and chastisement is the method of God's correction. It's not punishment. Punishment is never used in, a, in terminology of God dealing with His children that He loves. Punishment is a term that's used for those that will not receive the love of God and are cast into outer dark, darkness. But the writer of Hebrews warns not understanding the chastisement of the Lord, looking diligently lest a root of bitterness springing up Defile you. Defile many. You see, I don't believe I have to preach to do screaming all the time. I believe I'm getting across just fine right now. The problem is, some of you do not want to admit that you got a hard heart. Some of you are past feeling. What side of the word if are you on tonight? If your concept of our God is not from the pages of this book, and you are not diligently seeking out the Word of God to apply it to your life. Now I know we go through stages and we go through situations and God's the author of a lot of that. Seasons of life. But overall, you've got to be reaching towards a degree of reaching the fullness of Christ in your own life. If your concept is not that which is biblical, and unless the Lord build the house, it will not stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 9 and 27, please listen closely. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed Him, crying and saying, Thou Son of David, have mercy on us. And when He was come into the house, the blind men came to Him, and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Now some of you that believe that God's the author of your confusion, listen to the healing that took place here. Believe ye that I am able to do this? Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes according to your faith, be it unto you. Why is that so important to me, preacher? Because you'll notice everywhere where a healing took place, they had to receive the word of the Lord. 
The manifestation of faith was God, Jesus always required a manifestation of faith. He said, Are, do you believe I can do this? Do you believe that I'm able to make them whole? Do you believe I can do this? Do you believe I can do that? But the Bible says, harden not your hearts. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, today if you will hear His voice, the people were healed when Jesus was here, when they responded to His voice. Harden not your hearts. What keeps well-intended new converts? And they're in the church a while. And God may bless them with a family and an income. Hopefully an income first. Better be that way. I don't care how meagerly it is. Do something. But what turns good, hot fire, new converts into people that begin to drift back towards the door? You ever wondered that? I've wondered that a lot of times. Hallelujah. You all still love me? You all love God? Good. Then I know God's going to have His way around here. Jesus asked the Father and said, How long ago has it been like this? And the man said, Of a child. You know what a lot of our problems are in this building tonight? Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians 13. When I was a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Some of us have not put away our childish things. We're just full-grown babies. And if it ain't served just right, and the spoon ain't held just right, it's like I get a kick out of Zachary when he's full and he don't want the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you push away the bottle of God's Word. Hallelujah. You don't desire the sincere milk like you used to. You didn't come in here like that. You started up here, but you drift. You haven't put away all the childish things of looking at things and looking at yourself and looking at people and looking at God. You need to put those things away. And oftentimes, the man told Jesus, it has cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. Some of you live a life of topsy-turvy nightmare. You're in the water, and you're in the fire. You're hot in the Holy Ghost fire, then you're cold as ice. You're flip-flopping. You're undependable. You're, you're steady one minute. And you're, you're not steady the next. And the Father said, if thou canst do anything. Jesus said, it, it ain't if I can do anything. I, had already, I already established according to this Word of God that the God that you and I are in the presence of tonight created all the worlds with a word the god that i showed you according to his unveiling of himself to humanity brought forth his own by the power of his word and destroyed the enemies in the red sea brought forth water out of a rock brought quail from an eastern wind covered him with a with a cloud sent a flame of fire to guide him at night that same God is in regard and takes respect to them that are in the bondage of affliction by their own foolishness. 
Because it said when they cried unto the Lord, when they cried unto the Lord, when they cried unto the Lord, He delivered them. His power in deliverance. It ain't if God can, it's if you can. But some of our problem is, to wrap it all up, we become conditioned by age, by society, and what everybody else thinks. That ain't a biblical concept. God's built you to be a tailor-made devil chaser. To come in here burning and go out burning. To come in here praising and go out praising. To come in here giving and go out giving. To come in here rebuking devils and go out of here rebuking devils. Come in here praying with people and go out praying with people. To come in witnessing and go out witnessing what's the matter it's not if God can it's if you can it's not if God wants to it's if you want to it's not if God's willing it's if you're willing it's not when's God going to it's when you're going to it's not why God doesn't it's why you don't the problem's not God the problem's us But if you can do anything, the worst thing that could come to a child of God is to learn to live with that condition. You've learned to live with a little line of demarcation between you and the demonic forces that oppose you. You've learned to sidestep this. You've learned to coexist with this lie of darkness. You've learned to coexist with this. And your life is a life where you are nothing but a shattered, wounded saint of God that needs restoration. But if you will hearken unto the Word of God and not harden your heart as in the day of provocation, God will see you through. Jesus said unto the man, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Oh, that gives me hope tonight. If I can believe, all things are possible. Or are we unbelievers? Well, I, I, I believe, Pastor, I can be a believer and an unbeliever. I'm going to prove to you you can't be an unbeliever and a believer. Jesus said that mountain ain't moving if you've got doubt in your heart. He said have faith. Doubt is relative to trust. Fear is relative to faith. And straight away the father when he heard that Jesus said if thou canst believe all things are possible. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. He wasn't saying, I believe and I don't believe. That little boy on the ground wallowing and squalling was his unbelief. He could not believe for himself. He said, I believe. Help my my unbelief. You're either a believer or you ain't. These signs shall follow them that believe. You're either a believer or you ain't. Some of you need to stand in the steed to your situation of impossibility and say, I believe. Help my unbelief. Whose faith raised Lazarus from the dead? Oh, well, Lazarus, well, he was a believer, really? I thought he was dead. Whose faith raised Tabitha from the dead? Getting mighty quiet in here. I want you to listen to one scripture here. This is what Paul wrote, the book of Galatians. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He didn't say live by the faith of Paul. 
I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ has died in vain. We got some unbelievers in the bunch. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to point you out because I don't want you to move because I pointed you out. But Jesus told this man, He said, if you can believe, all things are possible. And the man said, I believe. But my boy down there, he can't believe for himself. Help my unbelief. He cannot believe for himself. He's my unbelief. 